um, paper 10A2. Uh, that, uh, to, first of all, welcome to everybody. Uh, for the comparison of the uh, dispersion com uh, compensation techniques for real time up to 160 gigabits per <laughs> um, C band transmission. Uh, that's a uh, group of people, and presenter will be Tom Salgas from Latin. Mm -hmm. is Tom. Tom? Good morning, Hi. everyone. Okay, nice to meet you. Please go ahead. Please share the screen and put your slides. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have 15 or 10 minutes for presentation, I'm sorry. Uh, I think 15 could be, yes. Okay, thank you. One moment. I will try or to... Even, or even 18. Okay. Okay. I hope you see my screen. This is nice. Okay. Uh, my name is Tom Salgos. I am from Riga Technical University. Uh, and my topic today uh, of both discussion will be comparison of dispersion compensation techniques for real time up to 160 gigabits per second DVD C band transmission. Uh, okay. Uh, we are a group of the people uh, from uh, Riga Technical University, Institute of Communications and Communication Technologies Research Center from Latvia. Uh, about uh, the uh, about the outline of today's discussion, first of all, of course, the aim of the research, a uh, brief discussion about experimental setup uh, for transmission of 160 gigabits per second, and a uh, little bit about uh, experimental setup models uh, uh, to compare effectiveness and such widely used chromatic dispersion techniques, uh, the comparison of these both techniques, of course, brief results and discussions. Uh, signal quality measurements, uh, the process of that, and conclusions. I'm of the research. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, uh, there is a related traffic uh, progress in uh, newest technologies, for example, a 4K, 8K live stream videos, virtual realities, and uh, other ones. And uh, I expect usage of more complex modulation formats in fiber optical link infrastructure. Uh, for cellular network transmission and that center integrations uh, are still affected with fundamental chromatic dispersion influence on the bare signal quality, uh, which corresponds to increase the bit error rate. The main purpose of all this work is to evaluate the performance of the experimental developed uh, DVDM transmission system and compare most often used CD compensation techniques. Uh, the experimental setup of DVD-MC band uh, transmission system uh, is the, to protect the signals and avoid dispersion effects during the transmission to widely commercially implemented dispersion compensation techniques as uh, uh, you, by use the fiber bar grating uh, or dispersion, fiber bar grating dispersion compensation model and uh, uh, dispersion compensation fibers, DCFs. And finally, of course, uh, also analyze the uh, influence of nonlinear effects. Uh, okay. Uh, for the real realization of this system, uh, the four channels was used and uh, some techniques uh, to realize this 160 gigabits also was used and will be discussed a little bit later. And total transmission is 160 gigabits per second. And uh, as you see, this is the okay, experimental setup in uh, RTO Contact Center of Riga Technical University. Uh, about, the, about the setup, uh, there was used four laser sources, uh, one multiplexer where we combine together all these uh, wavelengths, four with the channel space of 100 uh, 
gigahertz uh, for the commercial one what was used the river almost and uh, electrical arbitrary wi-fi generator with uh, date rate from 20 to 40 gigabits with per base uh, per base 11 and used only one maxander modulator up to 40 gigabits per second and it was driven for whole uh, four optical tones to make this decorrelation, there was created a model to make this uh, timing delay for each uh, wavelength. And uh, there was used a couple of the fibers uh, and uh, about that how it works, I will discuss a little bit later. Afterwards, uh, the signal was amplified by EDF amplifier, transmitted through the single mode fiber according to NGAPON uh, standards uh, for the 40 kilometers and more. And these two methods was used, uh, FBG and ECF fiber. Of course, the uh, dispersion uh, coefficient that we need to compensate also was analyzed by the X4, X4 equipment. Uh, and the optical spectrum also was uh, analyzed as the results uh, for the back-to-back -back transmission after once and after second method. And of course, the middle channel, uh, 193.1 terahertz, uh, the, or the central wavelength, uh, was analyzed uh, where the highest uh, impact of the crosstalk and the nonlinear effects was uh, observed. Uh, then we use uh, in the setup uh, uh, for 50 gigahertz photodiode uh, from the ammonics ones. And then analyze uh, real, in the real time results by the DSO and uh, calculate the bit error rate. <clears throat> to more uh, to analyze the res obtained results, uh, we also use the bare threshold of 10 minus 3 with the 7% fake overhead. Uh, and uh, actually, here you see in the picture. Uh, this uh, decorrelation model and how it looks in real life. It is the multiplexer to separate each wavelength and uh, make the decorrelation by use of the different length of the fibers calculated uh, how many bits we can make the uh, this timing uh, delay uh, according to the PRBS that we have used in our experiment. And these two methods like uh, FBG DCM, uh, it has 3.5 dB session loss at uh, reference wavelength 150-50. And uh, dispersion compensation fibers pool with uh, totally 5.684 kilometers uh, and 4.75 dB in session loss at the reference wavelength the same. Uh, with the negative dispersion coefficient, uh, which was uh, the uh, which was uh, uh, the same um, like the positive ones, the opposite uh, of the SMF fiber. And the experimental setup. We driven our system with different date rates uh, for the 20 gigabits, 40 gigabits by the two, by the uh, pair base 11 uh, from the uh, arbitrary waveform generator and use a uh, commercial available uh, 100 gigahertz uh, multiplexer server with the central frequency of 103.1. And uh, this decorrelation, this decorrelation method was used also previously, once is lo in a lot of uh, scenarios of the realizations. But uh, in this case, uh, we, we want to improve also the capacity for our system to get this data rate. That means the maximum was the 40 for the channel and the for four channels, 160 gigabits per second. And here you see in the table for according to the data rate, uh, per best delay in the bits for each channel. If you use the, for example, for the first one, there is no, uh, uh, there is no additional fiber used uh, in the decorrelation model. That means zero meters. Uh, for the second channel, uh, there is one meter. For the third, two, and for the three, plus one. That means for one meter long, uh, longer. And this makes the delay according to the bits. How many we can make this system that truly works like in real, real, real environment. Okay. Um, the first scenario was by the use the FBG DCM. Uh, it has the actually uh, work in the C band and the tunable um, uh, tunable uh, uh, bandwidth and also tunable uh, dispersion. What we need, we can put how many we need at the same moment. And secondly, we just. Uh, take the correct DC fiber for the length uh, of the, and the dispersion what I analyze by the X4 software. 
of course uh, to be compliant with uh, g989.2 recommendation uh, of that one we also make the tests with the OTDR for the smf fibers and analyze that by the ftb 500 x software softwares OTDR. And here we can see uh, real uh, results for the each fiber. That's mean for the, it, this was make for standard single mode fiber, a measure dispersion coefficient and total dispersion reference uh, that was 17.15 picoseconds per nanometer kilometer and uh, 688.71 picoseconds of dispersion slope, no 0 0.096. Uh, and we then we found the most suitable DC for the fiber span uh, for necessary accumulated uh, dispersion compensation. According to verified dotted measurements, uh, the length of experimental use dispersion compensation fiber spool is uh, 5.68 kilometers uh, with 475 decibels, a uh, total insertion loss of 0 0.83 decibels per kilometer. And the DCF fiber spool measure dispersion coefficient and total dispersion at reference fiber length uh, 1515 nanometer is minus 123.06 uh, for one kilometer and totally uh, for the total accumula accumulated, accumulated compensation minus 697.82. And um, uh, actually, this year fiber gave us the opportunity also to increase the length of our uh, four channel space, four channel space at the transmission system, and uh, additional 5.68 kilometers or extra 13.5 percent to achieve the maximum length of 47.81 kilometer. And in the graphs, you can see also the dispersion uh, coefficients what was measured for uh, each fiber spans that we use for this experiment and about their experimental results. As you see in the, this figure, uh, the experimental obstacles bear results uh, for the transmitted, transmitted modulation of NRZ or OKI signals uh, with bit rates of 20 to 40 gigabits and uh, received optical power at the 50 gigahertz photoreceiver. That means the bear device received optical power. Uh, the measured optical power after transmission throughout the 40 kilometer fiber or the link of our system varied from uh, minus, uh, point, uh, minus 0 0.21 to 6.8 with the bar from 5 minus 2 to 1 minus 10. Um, in such a way, the second six scenario with DCF post compensation were measured with optical output power after transmission through 4781 kilometer fiber length section. That's mean uh, the same single mode plus DCF fiber length, where it varied from minus 1.65 to 6.8 dBm. The pair of RC signals was uh, from the minus two step to minus uh, minus 12. And it is the graph of the uh, real time results measured uh, uh, from the Q factor. And uh, here is the, uh, as you can see in the, this figure, there is the spectrum of the four channel uh, system. Uh, before the launching into the 40 kilometer fiber span uh, by driven only by the one that's a Maxander modulator. Uh, and after the transmission of 40 kilometers, uh, after the 40 kilometers and the second after the DCF dispersion post compensation for the same systems. And you can see how it looks for the uh, or uh, system uh, according also to the data rate from the 20 to 40 gigabits per second. Uh, Depending on the uh, depending on the also uh, the position how it looks. Uh, actually, applying for the use of the DCF fiber compensation, uh, they receive a signal. Optical signals are mainly affected by the impact of nonlinear effects. The reason for that is the input optical power of the DCF fiber, which exceeds a certain value optical power density. In the fiber core and becomes extensively high because the effective cross section area of the fiber is only 20 micrometers and triggering the non linear polarization of the materials. And uh, according also the experimental results, uh, these are the I diagrams depending on the data rate on the compensation um, method or the FBG on the DCF. Uh, what we analyzed uh, uh, on okay, and uh, Experimental received signal after the 40 kilometers. Uh, that's mean you, we can see and uh, by the fiber grating and by the DCF. Uh, 
and this is transmission system uh, at operating bit rates up to 40 gigabits per channel is good and uh, i i were, was open and error free transmission was provided in our research we show only with the worst bad performance for the second channel where the highest impact of crosstalk is observed compared to the, to other vdm channels in the current transmission system uh, additional in session losses in dispersion compensating optical fiber DCF line and affection of nonlinear effects on transmitter signals lead to a performance decrease in four experimental transmission system where the bare operating of 20 40 gigabits per second per uh, gigabits per second uh, bit, uh, bit rate of the received signal was uh, from the minus two to minus five due to optical level on the pin photo receiver uh, from the fixed 7b1 and 7b25 as you see and after decreasing the length by the DC fiber, um, uh, we conclude that nonlinear effects are reduced significantly, where the bearer of the operating at for 20 and 40 bit rates per channel was minus two and minus five uh, due to, to power level on the fin photo receiver, the FIG 7A1 and 7A5. And about the conclusions. Uh, the com comparison was performed by implementing both techniques uh, in this current uh, transmission system uh, and transmitted over 40 kilometers standard single mode fiber span, SMF28, uh, with the total capacity of 160 gigabits and the additional fact threshold of 10 minus 3 was used. Uh, depending on the NRZ modulated signal bitrate, the bare signal at the receiver was, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, when the BGDCM uh, post compensation model was applied, uh, we observed the negative filtering effect of the channel with the BG was physical bandwidth limitations. It is possible to tune also, but we also observed that. There, uh, in our DCF post compensation extended, the total length of the optical section uh, was more. It was observed with the BG. Also, when DCF was used for compensation, we observed the signal degradation caused by nonlinear effects such as FVM. In addition to DCF fiber losses, which reduce the optical power output level cost, cost and the wires effect in terms of received sensitivity, which depends on the target bare level on the signal bitrate. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Point. I'm really sorry, but I'm hearing uh, myself all the time also now. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Okay. okay, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. However, you put too many details on, on pictures, you know, avoid it since it's very difficult to look with that. You know, better is to talk about that and show some, some fragments about that, that for putting uh, all, all many, many details that the characters are too small. It was, for me, it was very difficult to, to, to follow it. However, it's very interesting paper and a very interesting- I hear you, but I see, I hear the repetition many times. Okay, uh, questions? There are no questions. If no, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Once thank again. you. And we go to another another presenter. Uh, we I get information that Stefan Pandik already is coming here. Stefan, are you already? Stefan, I get information that Stefan uh, Pandik already already joined us. There's no answer. Okay. He, he, he doesn't hear he, microphone. Okay. He doesn't. He he, he uh, muted his microphone. Perhaps he is trying to answer, but I don't know. We 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 move to another another paper to another presentation to ten a four, and I ask Pedro Juan Roig from uh, from Spain to to have the presentation. Is okay, Pedro? Are you ready? Yes, here I am. Just give me a second. I share my screen. Fine. All right. Here we go. Please, please go ahead. Right, so just give me a second. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's start. So, okay, good morning to everyone. My name is Pedro Juan Roy, I'm coming from Spain, from Universidad Miguel Hernández. And this presentation is about MQTT algebraic formal modeling using ACP. Well, first of all, a small introduction, then we'll talk about MQTT. Then I'll talk about some ACP basics. And next, uh, I'll talk about the, the modeling uh, of MQTT. And finally, we'll draw some conclusions. Well, IoT, uh, as you all know, is that there are ordinary objects being interconnected to each other. Most of them have serious constraints regarding processing, memory, storage, bandwidth, and power consumption. Extra conditionings, such as the great amount of 
devices, scalability, harsh environments, interoperability, uh, easiness of configuration, and overall security. Regarding our IoT communication protocols, um, client-server and peer-to-peer -peer paradigms do not fit properly due to the restrictions of IoT devices. However, when a central entity undertakes most of the work, thus offloading it from the rest of the devices, it fits the best of the needs of the IoT communications. And that central server is known as broker, and the broker behaves as like a hub, whereas IoT devices do like spokes. Well, uh, regarding the approaches to IoT communications, we have two different approaches. The first one would be PubSub, where an agent called the subscriber informs the broker that it is interested in receiving some type of messages, and another agent called the publisher issues those messages, whilst the broker acts as the middle point between both agents. And another approach would be RRPC, where an agent called, named Coley informs the broker that he has some procedures to run. Another agent called Caller may call the procedure, whereas the broker invokes it at the colleague, takes the result of it and passes it on to the caller. Therefore, the broker does it all. Infrastructure, uh, service infrastructure in IoT. Two ways of implementing a message pattern, no matter whether dealing with PubSub or RPC. First of all, message queue, where the broker generates a unique queue of messages for each subscribed client and it will be delivered when the client gets connected, such as in the case of a live, uh, of an online, uh, online forum. And uh, another case would be message service, where the broker distributes messages upon arrival, meaning that those will not be received by non-connected clients, such as in the case of a live chat. Well, now it's time to talk about MQTT. It, it, it stands for MQ Telemetry uh, Transport. It is a PubSub protocol of service message it works on TCP, where each connection keeps open and may be reused in each communication. And the acronym, the acronym MQ originally stood for message queuing, but this is not the case anymore. So it would be better off referring it to it, uh, to it as the acronym MQTT to avoid misunderstanding. As as uh, as, 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 I, as I said, it, uh, MQTT is a service message and not service queue. Well, MQTT was first developed in 1999 and its features make it an ideal solution for M2M and IoT communications. Nowadays, the current version is version 5.0, released in, 12, in, in 2019, is an OASIS standard. This protocol is lightweight, easy to implement, suitable uh, uh, for low power IoT devices, and it allows a high number of concurrent customers. Well, regarding MQTT messages, the messages are organized and filtered by hierarchical topics. Messages may be published to the broker with a certain topic, and it will be redirected to all subscribed clients interested in that particular topic. So the direction is always publisher, broker, subscribers. Uh, regarding the main commands in MQTT, uh, a client may be a publisher for a particular topic and at the same time a subscriber uh, for others. And also most of the messages are, are acknowledged by the broker, right? Mainly of, all of them, but uh, the disconnect. The disconnect message is not acknowledged. Well, regarding the QoS in MQTT, there are some three levels defined, right? QoS 0, it's also known as, uh, as unacknowledged. The message is delivered at most once. QoS 1, where uh, it is known as acknowledged and the message is delivered at least once. And QoS 2, it is known as assured, where the message is delivered just once. Well, now we'll uh, jump to the ACP uh, basics. Mm, we're going to talk about specification, where atomic actions, we have atomic actions such as send and read messages and the collection of operators in order to combine such actions. And all those operators are governed by means of a set of actions ruling ACP. And we also have verification. It is achieved if the behavior of the model specified is fully branching similar with that of the real system, meaning that they both share the same string of actions and also the same branching structure. Well, we also uh, have some different uh, operators in SCP, such as sequential, alternative, concurrent, conditional, deadlock, encapsulation, silent step, uh, abstraction, and guarded linear recursion. And we're going to use all of them just in order to. Uh, provide the model. So uh, on for, uh, to the model itself. Okay, model in MQTT, uh, the scheme proposed for the MQTT model is this, right? We have three entities. We have one entity called the publisher, another entity called the broker, and we're gonna imagine just, just one entity called subscriber, right? Just to keep it simple. 
And there we have four different channels. We have the channel pop going from publisher to the broker, right? We have a channel sub going from the broker to the subscriber. And we also have a channel in, right? For the, for the sensor and the publisher to get information from the outside world, right? And we have channel out, right? For the um, actuator in, uh, in the subscriber to send message to the outside world, right? So at the end of the day, we have four channels in, pop, sub, and out. And we have three entities, publisher, broker, and subscriber. Right, um, regarding the, the publisher, right? So the thing is we have uh, the, the publisher sends a message, sends a, a connect message to the broker, right? Then the publisher just uh, gets information in from the real world through a, se a sensor and this passes on to this broker through a publisher message, right? Then we have a keep alive to the, uh, to the broker in order to maintain the connection. And then we have the a disconnect, a disconnect message just to uh, break the connection to the broker. Regarding the broker, we have that uh, um, it is possible for the broker just to receive a connect message from the publisher, right? Uh, then it is also, um, there's, there's also a possible message from the broker just to receive a publisher message for, 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 from, from a publisher. And then if this is the case, it just sends the message to all different publishers, to all different subscribers, sorry, if there are some subscribers. Uh, there's also just a possible, uh, the broker is just waiting to, uh, to receive a connection from, as a, from a subscriber or, as, or different subscribers. Then it is also ready just to receive a message to subscribe, a subscribe message from the subscribers or even an unsubscribe message to break the subscription. And then it, it also is waiting for the to receive the keep alive from the subscribers and from the publishers. And the, it, it is also just uh, possible just to get a message to uh, disconnect message from publishers and subscribers. And also regarding the subscriber entity, it is possible just to receive a mess, published message, a published message from the broker. And if this is the case, it just sends this message out through uh, at the out channel through a or by means of an actuator, then it might send a connect the message to the broker, it might send a subscribe message to the broker, it might send an unsubscribe message to the broker, it might send a keep alive message to the broker, and it might send a disconnect uh, message to the broker. So putting it all together, putting uh, all three entities to work in a concurrent manner, all of the uh, all of the messages, all of the adjacent channels just um, achieve communication uh, uh, among them, right? So if we just um, specific, um, if we just center, we just focus on the specification, skipping the control messages and focusing on the data messages, we have that all three uh, entities working in parallel and after applying the proper operations, the proper uh, operators in ACP, we have that. Uh, um, a sensor is getting information from the environment. This information is passed from the publisher to the broker. The broker then passes on to the uh, subscriber and the subscriber just makes some action through an actuator on the outside world, right? So this is all the chain of events here. And then uh, after applying some ACB operators, we have this expression, right? Saying that this entity, right, just receives an outside message from a, a sensor and then sends this message through an actuator to the outside world, right? And then repeats again. So this might be the external behavior of the whole system. So in, in order to verify the model, we just compare the behavior of the real system, which would be like this, right? An entity just send, receiving a message for, uh, from outside world from a sensor and sending that message at the end of the day, to and the outside world from a, uh, or through a, an actuator, right? And the behavior of the model is basically the same, right? We have the entity, we have the received the message from the sensor, and we have the send the message through an actuator, right? And repeating the, ent repeat repeating the entity again. So by comparing both expressions, it is obvious that they are both root branching similar, as they express recursive equations where the recursive uh, variables are x and this entity, respectively, and they are both multiplied by the same factors, meaning r sub i sub d and s sub out d, right? Therefore, the model proposed gets verified. And finally, conclusions, we try to build up an algebraic model for MQTT protocol, 
taking some previous assumptions to keep it as simple as possible, right? A simple set of axioms <coughs> have been applied in order to achieve a specification and verification of the model considered, such as no encryption, uh, QS1 with no transmission errors, only one publisher and one subscriber with just one topic. And after applying and verifying the model, it has been reached the conclusion that the model proposed meets the requirements expected. So this is it. Uh, this is the end. Thanks very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer it. Thank you, Professor, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, if I opened the paper. The paper was open for discussion. Some questions? If no questions, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks again. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. OK, thanks. I get information that uh, Stefan Panik is already ready to, to, to give a presentation. Uh, Stefan, are you, are you already? Uh, I think I'm ready. I will, I will try, try now to, to present. I'm having like some sort of technical difficulties with, with my connection from Serbia. Okay. Therefore, what do you want to, to, to have now this, this paper or later? Maybe at the end of the session to... to, okay. to... okay. Thank you very much. I just want, we will be in the contact. Uh, thank you one again, Pedro, again for a very nice paper. And now we'll go to the paper 1085 by um, the propagation losses algorithm development for wireless sensor network. Please, uh, Roman Belinskis, please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. 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 Just share my screen. Oh, just a moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Ramot Belinskis. I am a PhD student in Riga Technical University. I would like to present to you our work, which name is Propagation Analysis Algorithm, the open for wireless sensor networks. The problem of um, um, Radio waves indoor propagation has been greatly received uh, a lot of attention. And primarily, this is due to the development of local information networks and the necessity of providing reliable radio communication networks uh, for operational management and security in building automation systems. Our work shows a study on reliability of data transfer between nodes. And other sensor networks has, have losses of the existence of a noise caused both by other devices in the complaining range and by the existence of their own echoes. And exists problem with uh, other sensor networks in building to delivery of data packets from the source to the destination node. Uh, this picture shows the application level of data transferred from one location to other in a given amount of time on the distance of the source about um, 100 meters, 100 meters. At a near distance, about one meter, the average amount of useful data we can receive by receiver is about um, six megabytes per second, but at uh, 100 meters distance, about uh, 1.2 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. uh, the result of the performance tests show that the average good put at decreasing while the distance is increasing due to the well-known powerless model. Um, in this slide, we can see system reliability model System's action is presented by a symbol which obtains value of 1 if the system is functioning and value of 0 if the system fails. Action over each of an elements of this system respectively is represented by a symbol xi which obtains value of 1 if i element is functioning and 0 if i element fails. And um, action of this the system is Determinately depends on action of its elements. It means that is function. Uh, this function is structural function of all system. 
Um, this picture describes signal changes passing the obstacle in our research. Uh, the source of a signal is at a point O1, at the distance of H1, uh, the receiver at point O2, at the distance H1 from the obstacle, and thickness of the obstacle is M1, and the signal failing at the angle delta to the obstacle's normal passing H1, and the signal reflecting on the border of two environments extends at the uh, angle tau to obstacles normal and uh, in obstacle overcomes the distance m1 and after uh, reflection on border of two environments the signal extending in space at angle delta to obstacles normal and passes the distance distance h2 respectively the signal shift in relation to normal failing will be h mm. in the distribution of a signal its trajectory uh, changes instead of straight line it becomes a broken one for this signal in this that we see a matrix model that we used in our research this model describes the waking of a signal passing the obstacle. The size of a signal depends both on distance to a signal source, attenuation coefficients when the wave passing through the environments, and single angle failing before and after passes, and, pro and the signal frequency. It depends. Um, in our research test, experimental test bed, we use uh, for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi rotor with 802.11 put N protocol that for that transmission. And for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna, we use Airmix AC that transmission protocol. A receiver in our system, this is a web apps, is placed in five points, which schematically shown in figure and records uh, emitting, emitting power. Mm, the choice of the location of machine points is made to minimize the influence of multipath distribution on the well of the accepted signal and um, maximum solar diagrams of directions of receiving and transmission antenna uh, direct at each hour. Um, the expense was performed at Riga Tech University laboratory rooms. In order to make the measurements as accurate as possible, um, each of measurement sites, we do 20 measurements were received using the application and at 10 minutes intervals. Uh, to, to conquer the obstacle progression was it's necessary to look at uh, obstacle free propagation loss at a given distance and then repeat it uh, with the same distance with obstacle. Uh, in this table, we can see experiment measurement results in our experimental. Um, here we can see signal measurement points, destination, theoretical calculation, and, and uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Experimental signal compression at uh, 2.4 GHz and theoretical experimental compression at uh, 5 GHz. Um, the list of difference of experimental data is observed in measurement positions from 2 to 4 meters. Uh, it is related to the fact that the signal passes through the obstacles via the shortest path. And in the 0.6 meters, the signal was uh, most of energy passing through the obstacles via a longer path. Mm, this effect isn't considered in a signal distribution model that we used, as it uh, leads to increase the uh, difference between expert and data. And practical measurements 
results are better than that cohesion data, which shows the correctness of user to model with our model. Um, Explain data showed that uh, all points had high signal propagation loss, that is shown in this figure. Uh, based on the data obtained in 2.4 kHz band using a rotor and a variation, it's possible to determine the signal propagation loss quite accurately. By concluding from the data obtained in 5 kHz, uh, band using two antennas. It can be said that antenna signal is very good. At, at one meter, the signal strength was too good compared to the theoretically obtained data. And our conclusions. Uh, our works offers a method of reverse assessment uh, pretty capable for our sensor networks. <clears throat> From the obtained data and compression with Technical data, it can be concluded that uh, in both frequency bands, it's possible to determine the signal propagation loss, losses quite accurately. Uh, this can help in future when installing sensors on buildings which rotate via the shortest paths. Uh, the data obtained for the algorithm are very important for the sensors to find the best routing path. And for cases when the network has to keep working if one of the nodes fails, uh, this way the nodes will be able to react quickly and find our quickness path to uh, the destination. And consider model are universal and can be used to solve various problems, which is related with the design of various sensor networks in buildings. And in future, we'll be we will use more measurements for signal losses model concerning the longer distance and more obstacles in buildings. Uh, we will consider machine learning techniques to solve problems such as energy wave communication and optimal sensor uh, localization and uh, resource allocation in various sensor networks. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting paper. Uh, that's uh, may I have a question? You know, that's uh, you make experiments inside the closed space. It was a room inside, and your yes. ob obstacle obstacle was a wall. Is right? Obstacle is wall. Uh, so yes. between two rooms. Two rooms. It is homogeneous homogeneous material. Yes. Uh, what will be if if it will be no homogeneous? Um, it depends what is the material. Yeah. Uh, and uh, each material has um, far of power uh, less in decibels, but yeah. signals uh, is going through this obstacle. Mm -hmm. It uh, depends which material is uh, in a measurement. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> experimental. I, I, I'm asking you, and in your case, you just you just uh, uh, you just specified the results only for this. This particular material, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. More, more question? Thank you. Thanks again for a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, I got information that only one paper is missing, the first one. And uh, the last one will be Stefan Panic. Now we will go to, to, to the 10A6 uh, dental uh, amalgam influence on the amount of absorbed energy from mobile phone. Please, Nena. So it's coming, Professor, please go ahead. We don't hear you. Sorry, I, I moved the phone because of section. Sorry, again. Yes, <laughs> Officially, good morning to everybody. Um, I'm Nea Svetkovic, as you heard, I'm coming from uh, Serbia, from Faculty of Electronic Engineering, University of Niš, and yeah. I represent the paper dental, uh, about the influence of dental amalgam on the absorbed energy from the mobile phone. Uh, structure of my, of my presentation will follow more or less structure of the paper, that means introduction, speaking about electromagnetic model and how we model uh, biological tissues, 
results, discussion, and conclusion. Okay, let's start. Uh, I don't care to emphasize and to explain too much as in paper how often we use uh, today mobile phones, especially smartphones, and they're part of our everyday life. And as, as uh, very, old, I mean, as, as part of uh, modern life, they are also sources of electromagnetic non-ionizing radiation, which is uh, uh, characterized and accepted as a health hazard when the amount of the, of the, of the electromagnetic field or energy um, or, uh, the decrease is larger than some uh, accepted uh, values uh, based on the standards and uh, recommendations are, which are published <coughs> and accepted from the corresponding authorities. Uh, the result of that was that uh, the, in previous decades, I can say, uh, some researchers started started with the uh, with the developing developing procedures for calculation and analysis of the influence of the electromagnetic field. Uh, of course, we needed the model for that, and uh, uh, simultaneously with the developing of uh, computer uh, tools and the resources, computing tools and resources, uh, the model uh, became more complex and constantly more realistic. So there are many uh, researchers today which uh, resulted with very realistic models, but not too many of them are oriented on something which is uh, research, uh, sub or, or, uh, which is a problem uh, presented, in the, presented in this paper. So, the, the main aim of this study is the relation and stimulation of the mobile phone radiation exposure effects in the dental amalgam vicinity. Uh, there are two, uh, va two values we, we try to, to, to determine and analyze. First, it's electrical field the, the distribution in the vicinity of presented amalgam, and also uh, the influence of that dental amalgam presence on a electric field distribution from the mobile phone. And uh, also there is also uh, another parameter, parameter uh, SAR, uh, specific absorption rate, uh, which is actually quantifying uh, more, uh, uh, quantifying influence of uh, electromagnetic field uh, on a tissue. Uh, it's important to model very well and precise uh, human jaw uh, and uh, also th 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 this is actually uh, something which is add as a new value in this paper since uh, model of the head was used in some previous of researchers i will explain that uh, later more precisely the research and the uh, simulation are realized for uh, uh, one uh, 900 megahertz and 2.6 gigahertz, which are frequencies co which correspond to 3G and 4G mobile networks. Uh, here you can see the uh, illustration of the procedure, how, uh, how the, the whole structure is modeled. First, uh, since one of our co-author is a professor in medical faculty, he, he helped us to uh, based on the ex ex external appearance of the draw, uh, draw which is uh, created by him, by, uh, his prosthetic, by, by that is prosthetics, uh, it's possible to model uh, uh, draw as a geometric uh, domain and put it in the existing model of the, of the head. When we have all this, we add a mobile phone in the some usual uh, usual uh, position when we are speaking and and and, and use it. Uh, it's very important to uh, do uh, modeling of human head uh, precise. The tools we we have today uh, uh, allow that. 
And uh, to determine, I will, it will be also explained uh, on future slides, uh, corresponding cross section of the head where there is sense to uh, analyze and observe uh, distribution of corresponding parameter. In this case, this is electrical field distribution and specific absorption rate distribution. Concerning model, uh, model of model form, uh, it's model of the, for, and as a three part structure display, mobile housing, and the uh, inverted F antenna. In Serbia, we say PIFA, we don't spell it. Uh, uh, the, the model is uh, realized uh, in the way that microphone is on the lower part of the, of the phone, which is the case, uh, which is case with the, let's say, modern version of smartphones. Now let's go to electromagnetics. Uh, you know more or less that uh, when you, you have an electromagnetic problem, you cannot avoid the Maxwell equation. Uh, and uh, those Maxwell equations need to be solved. So because of that, we need a good, uh, good approximation of tissue characteristics and corresponding parameters in order to be able to precisely define the boundary conditions, which are necessary for solving system of uh, Maxwell equation. Those electromagnetic properties are well known, electric permittivity, magnetic permeability, and conductivity. On the first version of the slide, I have also density, because I need it for specific absorption rate, as you will see later, but the density is not the electromagnetic property of tissue, but it's important also for, 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 for this analysis and research. Uh, in, in previously published standard and publication and papers, it's possible to find, in this case, for us, it's important values of uh, relative electric, electrical permittivity and specific conductivity, as well as density of the corresponding tissue. You can see that uh, for each tissue, uh, not for each tissue, but for most of them, uh, the, those characteristics are defined. Uh, we are speaking about dispersive uh, media, so those characteristics are different for uh, different values of frequency. Uh, also, uh, electromagnetic characteristics of dental amalgam uh, are included uh, in literature, and it's some, some typical uh, composition of amalgam uh, contains silver, tin, copper, zinc, mercury. <sighs> But no, there is nothing special to emphasize this. So we were, it is possible to find uh, uh, that composition and uh, uh, to, to, to involve it in corresponding model. So when we are speaking about results, uh, results are defined for uh, three different cross section, section of the head. Uh, they, are, uh, they are realized, uh, I mean, result, results are obtained for uh, situation where the amalgam is presented and when it, when, it, when it is not presented and also for two different frequencies. That means that we have three cross section, we have uh, two frequencies and we have situation there is amalgam, there is no amalgam. Now the, we have results uh, in the paper are presented uh, features in order to visually uh, uh, illustrate actually uh, uh, obtained results, but uh, I will I will pass over those uh, features without too many explanation because we are, uh, there are tables which are waiting for us and I think they can be more interesting from the point of view uh, from the point of uh, explaining and analyzing influence of amalgam presence on electri electric field and the uh, specific absorption rate distribution. You can see that uh, visually that uh, here uh, ele electric field is uh, uh, of more, 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 strength, more strength than with the situation without amalgam. Uh, this is another cross section. For, we have uh, two different frequencies as I have already told you and explained you. Uh, electric field distribution in the vicinity of amalgam, very close to the, to the tooth uh, for two different frequencies. <coughs> and they, it is stable. Uh, I will try to 
I emphasize some important, some important things which are also part of the discussion, which is at, at the, uh, the one special chapter of the uh, paper. So you can see for uh, uh, the results are for 3G and 4G uh, frequencies. Uh, this red 41 value in this column and 24.4 value uh, uh, in second, second column are allow, allowed uh, values based on standards for uh, those frequencies. And uh, you can see that in all cases, uh, electric field uh, intensity is higher than uh, uh, values which are allow, uh, allowed uh, by existing standards. And it is uh, very emphasized uh, when the amalgam is presented for uh, 3G, that means uh, 0 0.9 gigahertz frequency. Uh, it is not so, let's say, dangerous here, but uh, you can see that that is, that is very emphasized here. Uh, and also, as it was expected, values are larger for 3G than 4G frequency. The second parameter I have already mentioned it is the specific absorption rate, which is def defi defined this way. Uh, specific conductivity uh, with density ratio, ratio uh, and this is the uh, intensity of the existing electric field. And somehow I believe, and um, I, I think um, more, more the, the larger part of the researchers believe that uh, that parameter is somehow more uh, describable. Uh, it's better to describe situation with electromagnetic uh, field difference because it's, uh, uh, it's, it, it, it uh, illustrates actually energy which is absorbed on uh, uh, absorbed by uh, radiation source. Also, it, it uh, is defined the same uh, in the same way for different frequencies, which is also something uh, at the end makes him more useful and more illustrative for influence of electromagnetic field on tissue. Uh, also, the, the average SAR, uh, SAR, specific absorption rate, is defined. It's a value of the spe specific absorption rate, uh, average uh, volume, which correspond to the mass of one gram. There is also average value for 10 grams, but in that case, when you are speaking about two, uh, one gram average was uh, something convenient to use in order to illustrate, let's say, absorb, absorb the electromagnetic field energy. In the same way, the same organization of the result presentation is, is also for, for SAR values. So we say speaking about, um, we are speaking about two frequencies, free cross section and situation.
Okay, uh, fine. Yeah, two minutes. So you will be reading the presentation. Okay, we are one more minute. Okay, they pull you up. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. Few minutes, gentlemen. Yes, already. Who is ready? Yes. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, Prof. Uh, okay. I, I can present now. And I want to share this screen. OK, yes. Uh, okay. Can you see this screen? No, nothing. Yeah, I can. Yes, uh, I think. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, but uh, we, this... don't, we don't see anything. Oh, OK, 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 OK. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Shala Islam, and uh, this is actually my presentation uh, title, uh, paper title, that is uh, Packet Delivery Cost Analysis of a Flow Enable Proxy Nemo Scheme in a Distributed Mobility Anchoring Environment. And basically, uh, this uh, research actually is an enhanced enhancement of my PhD work, and uh, we have published few papers, and this is the enhanced version of this. And here, this is the out uh, contents of this presentation. Um, so, so to, uh, please make us full screen your slides. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Okay, now you can see, right? Yes, everything fine. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so uh, the contents for this presentation basically uh, introduction related work and proposed uh, methodology as well as some results and discussion on it and finally conclusion. So uh, this work is basically on mobile network actually. And what we can see from this diagram that this is a mobile architecture. And uh, for this project, we are considering actually the car mobility. When car is moving, so, our concentration is to minimize the handover delay as well as to improve the performance, well, especially during inter technology handoff. Like, if what happened when we use different access technology in a distributed mobility environment. And here, what we can see here that yes, we have some uh, a car, and in, inside this car, we have some mobile network nodes. And here we are considering only uh, the local fixed node. 
because we know that in mobile network node, we have several types of nodes. For example, we have visiting mobile node. Maybe we can have some local mobile nodes, but for this research at this moment, we are using local fixed node. This is the, just the, uh, for the experimental things. Later on, we will uh, think about the visiting mobile node also. And also we have here corresponding node as well as some home network for this mobile uh, mobile uh, car or any, any mobile mobility device. And uh, this mobility actually can be reachable to its home network via this top level mobile router. This is actually the main thing for this mobile network, that is the network mobility, that all the mobility is handled here by this top level mobile router, that is uh, here simply we can say TLMR. And uh, uh, most important thing for this architecture uh, is that, that this top level mobile router only needs to change its point of attachment. It means that when this uh, network, this mobile network is moving from one network to another network, only this top level mobile router need to change its IP address. So when it, they are moving from the new network means they don't have to think about that their uh, IP address or uh, the any address they are changing no because this mobility is handled totally here there this TLMR and that's why uh, here this is the main scenario for this uh, protocol which is the network mobility basic support protocol this is actually for mobile environment and all these uh, addresses recorded at this network means it's in its home network which is a home agent for this top level mobile router and in between this network have one tunnel which is called here bi-directional tunnel so uh, this uh, all this mobility can be reachable through this tunnel so this is just the basic scenario for the the basic network mobility protocol and based on this protocol we are trying to enhance the performance why because the uh, based on the observation you can see that when it is moving from one access uh, one access technology to the different network access technology means there have chances of handover delay. And ultimately handover delay means and definitely can have some packet loss. Also it can affect on the performance during movement from one, one network to another network. So here we can see that they have some uh, packet format that they, when they are moving from home network, their packet format should be like this. Means they, this packet should contain the home agent of home address for this uh, top level mobile data as well as its care of address. Means currently current address should be recorded in this uh, format. And also we have correspondent node as well as mobile network node. Mainly here, this mobile network node means we are, we are focusing only local fixed node. And uh, these things are for actually for tunnel tackle tunnel format, we can see. And also we are trying to integrate uh, this proxy Nemo with this uh, mobile architecture means we want to integrate uh, network mobility basic support protocol on proxy Nemo means on proxy domain. So that's why uh, uh, here we have some uh, explanation on this protocol that which is a proxy Nemo everything is handled actually here from the network side so uh, this when this mobility is happening means they are uh, sorry this is actually their signaling procedure means uh, if we compared with the network mobility basic support protocol with this proxy nemo we what we observe that the signaling message definitely no need to send several times as like uh, in for mobile network which is this need to be done by this if we apply only network mobility basic support protocol so signaling uh, signaling is another issue for this environment so we want we also want to uh, focus on these signaling issues so that we can reduce some signaling messages and can ultimately reduce the delay because we and also Another important term is costing because if we if required more signaling means ultimately it can increase the cost. So also we want to calculate basically the cost, special focus given on packet delivery cost. And for packet delivery cost, for this paper we are 
we are just trying to analyze the tunneling cost. Because I mentioned previous slide that we have a tunnel here. So what happened, well, how much uh, cost actually need, needed to uh, for this uh, creating this tunnel. So also this is an important factor for this area. So this is basically the architecture for this uh, uh, proposed uh, uh, flow enabled proxy demo in a GMA environment, a distributed mobility anchoring environment. So here, but we can see that when this, uh, this uh, car, if they are moving from, for example, from Wi-Fi to Wi-Max, so this is the overlapping area. Still, they are connected with the, or, uh, with the previous network as well as uh, already connected to the new network. So what happened in this uh, point? Because there have chances to uh, disconnect the network from the old one. So definitely there have some uh, delay. And based on that delay, definitely there have some uh, there have some uh, packet lost. So the, we want to uh, for mainly this uh, proposed architecture trying to minimize this uh, this uh, packet loss as well as handover delay. How they, here if we change uh, some here binding catch entry. So in this format, we need to change few bits. Based on that, yes, it is possible if they are at the same time, they are connected with both, both access technology means they are connected with Wi-Fi as well as they are connected with WiMAX. And if these are reachable, definitely this flow, we can see here flow one and flow two means we if we have two applications running uh, by using these two access technology at the same time, it is possible to minimize the delay during this uh, this uh, inter-technology handover, handover time, hand of time. And for that case, we uh, here, we modified few things. And this highlighted part, actually, this is if we enhance this version, then uh, by analysis, mathematical, as well as some simulation, we can see that, yes, we can see some improvement here. And this is actually the basic architecture, sorry. So here, the masses format that we here, what we included here, you can see this is normal. Like uh, we are this mass, uh, this format, masses format basically on network mobility basic support protocol as well as we want to integrate the proxy mobility physics. And then we try to uh, try to add one, one um, flag here E. Basically, this indicates the early registration. And also we allocated another uh, flag here D. This indicate basically mobile routers prefix and port. So if we enhance here, and for this F indicates that this proposed architecture supporting flow, flow mobility means here we are applying uh, the logical interface so that we need to we need to change a few bits here, this flag, and also we need uh, we, we 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 have. Uh, enhance few things here, flow-based mobile network and or prefix option. These option basically we added with this message format. So this is actually the enhancement here. And based on that, this is actually the signaling flow. And signaling flow means that what we can see that if we if we include uh, these two, basically it's the router, but they have a special functionality so that they can support this flow mobility. So these two uh, routers, basically, this is an access gateway. So they have some uh, capabilities so that, and when this serving mobile router moving from the new network, uh, from home network to the new network, they need to exchange a very small amount of signaling messages during movement. And like this way, is it possible to minimize the, minimize the signaling delay that ultimately can improve the, uh, can improve the, handover delay as well as can reduce the cost, especially uh, we can see that it is possible to minimize packet delivery cost, especially funneling cost here. And for performance evaluation, basically in this paper, we include only the mathematical part. And for mathematical, yes, we consider only packet delivery cost. And our previous uh, uh, work actually, it focused on signaling cost. And this is actually the new thing that we analyze here, packet delivery cost, especially uh, special focus given on tunneling cost, basically. And the, for benchmarking, we are considering the base protocol, which is basic NEMO, as well as proxy NEMO, because we are 
we are considering all this mobility on proxy domain. So we also uh, try to uh, benchmark with this protocol. And uh, this is actually the diagram, mathematical. And for scenario, we just put here that, yes, this uh, work basically, if we think about the real time scenario, yes, we can see from this application from this environment. And this is all the path, hope distance we can see. And this is actually the overlapping region. And each path, like how many routes we are path we need to use. And uh, all, already we use uh, some uh, parameters here uh, from these papers that are already cited. And these are the, uh, these are the uh, how to say the formula that we enhance, or we can say based on our proposed architecture, we we uh, develop this uh, formula. And uh, based on this formula, basically here we can see this is actually the packet delivery cost. And when we calculate packet delivery cost, we need to uh, we define this part means tunneling cost here. This tunneling cost basically we calculated uh, actually by only here we we just take consideration on tunneling cost. We exclude few parameters here so that uh, when we benchmark with the uh, proposed uh, proposed scheme with the basic protocol because they also considering tunneling cost. So we exclude other parameters for comparison purpose only. And here, uh, based on this observation, what we observe that is if we change some parameters, for example, here the uh, number of mobile routers. If we increase, yes, we can see that uh, the proposed one, basically here, the blue color one, it shows actually uh, it reduced the cost. Why? Because here the signaling cost minimized. So ultimately, when we when signaling cost increases, ultimately the costing also can increase. So from this observation, we can see that comparatively, um, network mobility basic support protocol, which is the best protocol they are showing actually the i think the highest higher cost here the red color on why because for each frequent movement uh, for this car mobility need to inform their home network that it is moving so this will ultimately increase the cost whereas for proxy and uh, the proposed one they, uh, all the mobility actually is handled through the off from uh, from the network side so they can reduce some uh, here signaling cost. Based on that, also possible to reduce the packet delivery cost. And also here we are using some uh, we are we enhance some uh, assist format so that and support the flow mobility. That this is another reason to this way they can reduce the packet drops. Means ultimately uh, cost can be reduced. And here we compared with the cell residence time. Packet delivery cost, but with respect to the cell residence time. Why? Because if um, the mobility is higher, means it is higher mobility, means chances of uh, chances of handover delay is much higher. And here we can see if it is 10 millisecond, means mobility is higher. But when we see it's only 100 second means it's going something, it's reduced. So when its speed is uh, higher, can increase the delay. So uh, I think this also uh, shows the better performance for proxy NEMO as well as the proposed one compared with network mobility basic support protocol. And uh, this is another one here. Uh, sorry. This is actually for, uh, this is uh, with respect to this average session length as well as the packet delivery cost. Also, we vary here the number of mobile routers. We, in, we, we consider here what happened for if we have uh, 10 mobile routers as well as what happened for the 20 mobile routers. Maybe later we can increase the number of mobile routers also. And uh, for this is actually we, we here we turn new weight also we can vary and different different perspective we try to analyze that whether there has any uh, effect on this cause or not. So yes, we can see also that if we modify some massive, some bit as well as if we try, if we can integrate this proxy with Nemo, can reduce the cost as well as can improve the handover performance. 
So this that's all for this uh, presentation. And in conclusion, what we can say that clearly this is the enhanced version, as I mentioned earlier, that the, um, this is an enhanced version. And now actually uh, for our concentration is to do some uh, practical experiment. Currently it is in progress. So uh, definitely we will we will try to compare with uh, mathematical analysis results and practical uh, scenario that whether it but at this moment from this analysis it can be uh, predict that yes if we can reduce these things and ultimately uh, effect on the total cost as well as and improve the performance for this environment thank you very much thank you very much for a very interesting presentation uh, I remember that while traveling in the in the very fast train we have also the problem with with Congress communication. Therefore, your your contribution is very is very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very you much so. for coming to join us. Thank you, sir. So. Questions? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. And now we go to the last last presentation. Uh, I don't know if Stefan is Stefan Tanik is already ready. Stefan, are you already? I don't know what happened. Stefan? I don't know, still. I, I think, Bogdan, I think uh, that he disappeared. He was uh, oh. disconnected. Okay. Okay. Therefore, we show what, what we finish it. Okay. okay yeah, thank so... you very much, Prof. Okay. <laughs> I, I, actually, I have a class now. So, yeah. thank you very much. Good oh. to see you all. Our pleasure. Yeah. pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, what do we are doing? Does that I think it's, it's time for, for a technical break because okay. we, just, we just session ends just on time. Okay. Okay. Therefore, thank and you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, our speakers, for uh, yes. very nice presentations, very interesting contributions. And uh, thank you to, to, to Chairman Darius for, for help also. Okay. And thank well, you, Mr. Chairman, it for my, sharing. It was my pleasure. <laughs> And I close the session. Thank you very much. And I hope this next time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye. 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 Thank you.